JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Dario Solonchowskis. Today is the 4th of January, 2022. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday's morning session, or uh, recorded session of course for now. Um, but yeah, as always, before we jump in into the charts, um, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So yep, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, it should not be considered as such, and is not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, quick um, mentioning of our JD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So, yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com, and yep, click on the research tab right there on the top. So. Now then, um, so jumping into the chart, so as I said, the video is recorded. Um, so basically, by the time you will see it, um, the Nikkei and Nikkei will be um, Nikkei will be closed. Um, and uh, yeah, so for now, looking at this picture, of course, um, um, you can see that, I'm um, sorry, Nikkei is already closed as Shanghai Composite that I was referring to, sorry, uh, my bad. But um, yeah, Nikkei is, is closed already and closed just bang on on this downside line. So basically, um, uh, everything's so far, so far, everything is working according to the plan. So what I said to you that uh, the index might trade here for a little bit um, inside this symmetrical triangle pattern and uh, yep um, as I said before that if we climb above uh, all of these EMAs here in our daily chart then my next target is the upper side of the triangle and well look at this I mean we managed to reach that and we managed to stall there as well now of course it will be quite interesting to see how today's trading is going to go through today's European trading and uh, the US trading and where will they uh, drag the um, <clears throat> the Nikkei cash index after that so long story short for now um, if we're looking at this picture uh, you can see that uh, the mm, 29,333 territory did its job and did provide a good hold up um, and uh, if we're looking for some um, higher levels well basically a break of this downside line is needed together and, and together with a push above that 29,333 territory which is the high of the 26th of November just to be a little bit more on the safe side this is yeah that that's the level that I'm keeping an eye on and then of course, we will aim for the highest point of November near the uh, 29,961 zone, approximately around there. Um, but of course, around there, we have that psychological uh, 30,000 mark, which could be a good target. But for that, for all that, we need to see that break of this downside line and then a push above the 29,333 territory right there. Um, for the downside here, now um, a few adjustments have to be made here. Um, basically, uh, for the downside, I would prefer to maybe wait for a drop somewhere below this this territory in between the 29,904 and the 28,955 levels. Um, and then yes, uh, at the same time, if you drop below the um, below the um, some of these EMAs, like for example the 21 day and the 100 day EMA, then yep, maybe a bit of a uh, a larger correction um, to the downside could be possible. And the reason why I'm saying correction because we would still be within that um, within that symmetrical triangle pattern. So. Um, now then, in terms of Shanghai Composite, very quickly on this one, so this one is still open, 
Um, so yeah, this market is still running and uh, trading. So yeah, let's see. Let's see where this is gonna uh, end up being today. Uh, we still have around like what 26, 25 minutes left of trading here. Mm, the only problem here with Shanghai Composite is not really doing well as um, or should I say as 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 good as the um, as its its Japanese counterpart. Now. Here, for example, you can see that we made a push higher, but this level here, the 3,649 zone, the one that I talked about previously, did its job, did a very good job, and held nicely um, the index from pushing further north. Um, so, but the on the positive side, we are still trading above. Um, we are still trading above the uh, the 21 day EMA or in general above all of the EMAs on our daily chart. So if you're looking um, if you're looking for some uh, for some upside and there is still a chance to uh, to see some upside here, well, still probably wait for at least a pop above this 3,649 3, zone and then yes we could go from there um, in terms of the downside now this is where um, we will be a little bit more on the careful side um, because um, in a way even if it let's say drops below that 21 day EMA yes we could go maybe for a bit of a, a decline here but if this is going to just confirm a range for now well we could see the index moving sideways for a while so that's why I don't rush into anything uh, yet and um, let's see how all this is gonna play out but if you're a little bit more on the cautious side what you can do here is just maybe wait for a, um, a drop below this 3589 zone right here and then yeah we could go from from there lower um, now in terms of the German index, um, we had a beautiful pop here and basically what I said to you yesterday that if we do move above this uh, 15,974, 75 territory right here, this will confirm a fourth coming higher high. Uh, more buyers could join in. Um, let me just have a look at the cash index right now. Just Bear with me one moment. Uh, we can see that the cash index continues to push higher. So yesterday we we uh, we managed to stay above that psychological uh, sixteen thousand mark, and uh, today we're seeing the cash index already trading at around sixteen thousand and seventy-two zone. So approximately somewhere there. Um, so yeah, uh, we're above basically yesterday's close. But I don't think, let me just, um, I think it's also slightly above um, yesterday's high. So, um, yes, slightly above because the the high of yesterday was somewhere around here, this uh, 16,069 level. So if we continue to trade above that area, yes, that's great. We could see um, more buying activity here. I mean, maybe the bulls could push uh, the index further uh, north, we have a little obstacle here on the, around 16,202, but actually the main target uh, will be the highest point of November near the uh, 16,290 territory, approximately around there. So, let, yeah, be very careful for now. In case this suddenly, let's say, decides to uh, drop lower and falls back below this 15,975 territory, 74, 75 territory, well, uh, maybe actually we could uh, consider a bit of a decline here, especially if it also, uh, let me just grab a uh, line, I'll recycle one of these ones, um, I'll grab this one, and uh, if we tr also drop below the low of yesterday near the 15,943, Three level, um, and I could drop below that. Yes, may uh, lead to a bit of a um, a bit of a corrective move lower. So um, now jumping into um, jumping into the S and P 500. So as you know, yesterday um, the U S markets did have a nice, good, positive day, the first trading day of the year. Um, so yep, it ended up in in the green. Um, we pushed higher initially. We saw a bit of a decline here, uh, a bit of a drop here. But as you can see, one of the one of those moments, basically where um, it did drop below the previous. Uh, trading sessions low 
but it didn't stay below it, so it's a bit of a, a false breakout here, so always be careful with that, and uh, um, also, mm, like with the German index DAX, yep, be very careful with that as well. So in general, uh, always uh, keep an eye on these false breakouts, because these are a regular occurrence, as you know yourselves. Um, so yep, uh, basically we, yeah, we had a bit of a drop here, but then the bulls picked up and pushed the index higher. Now, uh, the current all-time high is roughly around the um, 4,809 zone, so approximately around there. We are currently sitting just fractionally below that area on the cash index. So uh, that becomes quite interesting to see. I mean, will we get a nice pop today? Well, to be honest, I think that we might get a, a breakout here. However, the question is, will we stay above that? So because always, again, remember about the false breakouts, um, because here, for example, you also got a drop below uh, the previous session low. But then, yeah, we quickly turn, turned around, and the same story with the opposite direction. If we if we do go for that all-time high, we could, yep, create it, and then, yep, drift back down. So, like, for example, here on the 30th of December, when we did create that all-time high, we did push higher, but we didn't really stay uh, above it, and we then drift, and we then f kind of fell uh, fell lower. Of course, this, uh, this price structure here shows quite a lot of positivity and we could see maybe this one actually staying above this pre uh, this current all-time high but again let's not over speculate on this one first of all let's consider all these scenarios and uh, yeah and then we can uh, go from there now in terms of the the downside here in the near term probably I'm gonna stick to the low of the 31st of December um, if we drop below that area once again, then yes, I'll, I'll consider po a possible move towards that 21-day EMA maybe. And the that low of the 31st of December is roughly around here, around the 4,765. 66 level, so approximately around there. Uh, DXY dollar index, so yep, uh, beautiful push higher. And this is what I kept talking about, guys. Um, always wait for that violation because I mean, uh, I was I was telling you guys to keep an eye on this because um, basically uh, this could continue being a uh, nice looking range here. So for now, well, I mean, if you're looking for some maybe some opportunities on DXY, uh, probably. Probably I would say for now they're in within that little range. Uh, so if you're if you do like to trade ranges, then well this is something for you probably because um, uh, it's currently now uh, back above this 21 day EMA. So it's kind of bringing that positivity back to the table. So so yeah, let's see if we can actually climb higher and maybe make our way towards the upper side of this range. So keep that in mind. Um, gold um, yesterday gold. Uh, uh, dropped heavily as you can see here and this is what I said to you uh, yesterday because what I said that if it stays somewhere above this um, 1815 tertiary approximately 1820 1815 if it stays somewhere around there then yes we could still see a nice good push higher we could still see that just because we are still trading above this upside support line however um, the fact that it got closer again to this upside support line taken from the low of the 9th of August, that of course makes me a little bit worry. And of course, and of course, if and if the markets continue to pop higher, um, this of course drop happened. Uh, yeah, of, uh, demand for gold uh, gold fell. Uh, everybody jumped into riskier assets, um, but and also DXY strengthened. So. So yeah, um, if DXY strengthens and if if, um, if also equities continue to rally, then well, I mean maybe there's no uh, there could be a, I wouldn't say no, but less interest in, in the uh, in the commodity here in the safe haven gold. So so yeah, at the moment, guys, I'm I'm being very careful. I'm probably will take a bit of an even a neutral, well actually cautiously bullish, I would say here because we st we're still trading above this upside line but if this upside line gets broken um, and we see a drop below the low of the 29th of December here near the 1789 or 90 level then yes we could go for some lower levels so keep that in mind 
Now, jumping into uh, US oil, WTI oil, so uh, we drifted lower yesterday, we fell below this 74.79 zone, I spoke about this area and I said that, well, and again, look at this nice beautiful false breakout, so yeah, um, a lot of probably traders got stopped out here because initially, yeah, uh, we, we moved lower, it was all looking quite good here for the sellers, but um, yep, as you can see, the bulls picked up quickly and the and in general the energy sector yesterday in the US was one of the main gainers um, actually let me just quickly double check that I believe yes I mean uh, energy sector did perform energy sector performed the best in gen, in, in general and uh, it was energy sector consumer cyclical and financial stocks that those are in the, in the same in that order uh, were the best performers but uh, yeah the energy sector was the best one um, so um, jump and uh, looking at this um, if you're looking for some upside, well, as I said before, um, yesterday I mentioned these two levels, the 76.88, the 76.95 levels, but if you want, we can round it up here a little bit towards that 77 mark in general, and if we do pop and stay above that area, then yep, that's where a few more buyers could join in. Now, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, looks the weakest one from the kind of the top uh, traded uh, cryptos. Um, because it seems that um, it's preparing uh, for a drop lower, but again, we cannot say that yet because um, first of all, uh, we are stuck here in this little range. Um, as you can see yourselves clearly. Um, so yeah, we're stuck in this little range here and uh, yeah, so um, for now, for now, for now, I mean, um, although it's quite tempting to go uh, to go lower, but uh, a break and, and uh, a break of this uh, hurdle is needed and this area is roughly around that 45,539 zone and not only a break we would we don't want just a false breakout we also would like to see the body of the daily candle kind of remaining somewhere around here and then yes we could go further uh, jumping into a few pairs the, f uh, the pairs will be quite similar to what well actually the majority of them will be the same as I, uh, I looked at uh, yesterday but I just wanted to show where we have ended up being so yesterday I talked about this AUD USD pair um, <clears throat> and I said that be very careful here and we might see maybe a bit of a retracement um, it might continue trading up and down here but within in between these uh, in between these two lines because at the moment um, we're still trading above this upside line taken from the low of the 6th of December and of course we're trading below this medium term downside resistance line taken from the high of the 25th of February so in other words for now we've drifted lower but as you can see um, this area somehow does its job and yep it's holding so can we do a nice little rebound here and a go and a move back up well let's wait and see but of course at this point when we get closer to uh, to one of the lines like this I mean we always of course uh, keep in mind that it can get broken uh, so that's why for now I'll be very careful here um, if we're looking for uh, some upside I would rather stick to this high of yesterday near the 0 0.7 277 and then go for the upside if this upside line gets broken well this could open the door towards lower levels a USD JPY also a good move uh, yesterday I talked about this and basically I said keep your eyes on the highest point of November near the 115.52 levels oh yep and we managed to break that so uh, looking at this where we can go next uh, well we'll just have to scroll back quite a lot I would say and uh, uh, basically one of the um, one of the levels here and let me just bring this one a little bit here um, because you can't see otherwise um, one of the other levels could be this uh, inside swing low of the 30th of December of 2016 um, that is roughly near the uh, 116.05 level so that's a very good target could be a very good target uh, but if that gets cleared of course then of course the next uh, aim is the 
Mm, the highest point of 2016, if I'm oh, sorry, nope, nope, that's not the highest point of 2016, I believe. No, that is not. That is the highest point of um, December of 2016, which is roughly around that 118.66 zone. And then, of course, yeah, we would take it from there. But at the moment, I mean, sorry for the small kind of chart here. But um, yeah, just uh, cannot capture the bigger picture otherwise. So long story short, for now, my next target is that 116.05 level. And then yeah, we'll take it from there. That is, of course, if the uh, pair continues to trade above this 115.52 level, which is the highest point of November. Uh, USD CAD, so uh, beautiful, beautiful move. and look at this. I mean, I'm, this is what I was talking about yesterday. And what I said that maybe just maybe we could see this one as a potential um, kind of uh, head and shoulders pattern with the possible neckline being right here somewhere. And uh, yeah, so, so far, so good. So yeah, I mean, looking at this, uh, I would say, um, so it's quite working out. Um, if, um, if USD CAD, uh, if the Canadian dollar, uh, or I should say, if the Canadian dollar uh, continues to um, kind of, uh, <laughs> let's put it this way, monitor or um, reference itself to, to the oil market, and it will, um, then yeah, keep your eyes on the oil, uh, on, on WTI oil, for example, if this somehow pops higher, then maybe USD CAD could drift back down again, so we could be, uh, see a bit of a roller coaster ride here um, in the next few days, but um, yeah, one thing for sure that um, I don't know if we have the finalized with the potential right shoulder here. Um, let's wait and see, of course. And in general, for now, with the head and shoulders uh, pattern, I mean, I'm, for now, I'm just kind of assuming that this could be the case. Um, but yeah, at this point, to be honest, it's not really attractive for me to trade. I would just observe this one. And uh, yeah, I would need to kind of maybe I at least wait for a violation of this territory, the highlighted one, in order to go for some higher levels and for the upside, maybe a push above this 1.2854, 55 level would be needed. Uh, GBP CAD very quickly on this one. So similar story, but again, I also talked about this one and um, a beautiful rebound, beautiful rebound, guys. I mean, 1.7087 level, I talked about that, and then there we go. So we have lift off and climbed higher. However, I'm not saying that this is right now making me very, very positive. Um, I would also take a very conservative approach on this one and uh, wait for a push above the 1.7292 level in order to go for some higher levels. For the downside, a drop below this 1.7087 level could uh, might do the trick for a few more sellers. A quick update on GBP and ZD also, yep, a nice good push uh, higher, beautiful pop above this barrier, the one that I talked about yesterday, the 1.9804, and uh, yeah, we climbed higher, we made, us, made our way north, and now uh, looking at this picture, let me just grab one of the lines. So we've managed to hit the, the area here, the 1.9879 zone, so again, the same probably game plan uh, will stick to the high of yesterday in order to go for some higher levels because a nice good pop above it would confirm a forthcoming higher high. At the moment we're seeing a bit of a retracement which is quite natural here and however if it breaks this upside line that's where it could become quite interesting for a few more sellers. EuroCAD also quite similar story you would like with uh, GBP CAD here. Um, we are kind of trading here but um, I wouldn't say that it on like on GBP CAD it looks like a head and shoulders. No, it for me Euro CAD here looks like a mess. Um, from at the moment I would say I'm I'm keeping an eye on this upside line which could get tested um, and then for me then uh, it will I will take it from there because if it rebounds from here then yes that's great could be uh, we could maybe consider some higher levels but uh, if this gets broken well I mean uh, we could go all the way maybe towards the lowest point of November and finally euro USD so uh, beautiful reversal here um, dropped back below the 21 day EMA so in a way everything's kind of uh, pointing a little bit more towards the downside. However, um, let 
me grab, um, sorry, not this, but a trend line. So if by any chance uh, this uh, this pair will ref will respect this short term upside support line taken from the low the 24th of November, now that's where it could become quite interesting because basically uh, what we could be getting here is a possible squeeze. Um, so let's say if it drifts a little bit lower, find support here near this upside line, rebounds and pushes back up here towards this downside line. Then, yep, um, then um, that's where it could become quite interesting for a few more uh, kind of buyers because uh, we could then maybe expect a possible break of this downside line. But again, like I said, for now, we're keeping an eye on this upside line. It's getting closer to it. If if this upside line gets broken, well, certainly this could open the door uh, towards lower levels. But um, again, let's not overcomplicate our life. Um, let's wait and see. As I said before, at the moment, EURUSD is not my favorite one to trade. Um, so that's why I'm just keeping an eye on this one uh, just for now. Um, <clears throat> Of course, uh, let me uh, just keep uh, quickly have a look at the um, the economic calendar. Um, so today, for example, we have uh, uh, quite an interesting day. Could be uh, we do have the um, UK manufacturing PMI numbers. So keep your eyes on the GBP pairs um, from. Uh, where what else? ISM manufacturing PMI numbers are coming out from the um, U.S. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, let me just quickly double check this. Um, on the seventh, on Friday, I think we have the U.S. NFPs. If I'm not mistaken, let me just quickly double check that. Um, that is correct. So we have the non-farm payrolls coming out. So maybe uh, this pair is saving itself for Friday but um, on but don't get me wrong I mean before the NFPs we do have the preliminary uh, inflation numbers from the EU so that could work out as well that could maybe be a good trigger for this pair so Keep your eyes on it. I mean, like I said, don't be surprised, for example, if we do move uh, uh, kind of sideways here uh, until Friday. And then, um, yes, um, we could see um, we could see some nice little movement. Um, so, yeah, guys, that's kind of it for this session. Just a quick re um, notification that on Thursday and on Friday there won't be any Traders Espresso. Uh, we will resume. I will resume on Monday. And on Monday, well, tomorrow I'm still going to have the recording. And on Monday, hopefully, uh, hopefully um, I can run this live again. So, so, yeah, apologies for that, guys. I mean, I know it's not the maybe the best option, but, hey, well... I'm, Kind of sometimes uh, some certain things are out of out of reach out of you know out of our hands but um so yeah guys i hope you found it useful thank you very much for watching and listening i really appreciate your time guys so yeah thank you for that and i'll see you uh well catch my video tomorrow <laughs> i'm not gonna see you but catch my video tomorrow guys um uh, so yeah thank you very much and have a nice trading day Bye bye